In this video, we'll look at the different options we have available for saving and exporting our work in Boxy SVG. This is some artwork that I brought in from the library, I just imported in and modified it a little bit, and it hasn't been saved yet. We see it's an untitled document. When we go to File, we have some different options. We can do Save. We can do Save As, which will create a duplicate of this document and change the file name, or we can go to Export. When we do Export, it brings up the Export panel. We can also get to this by just hovering over and left-clicking it to open up the export panel. And we have some different options for exporting. One of those options is SVG, and that's going to be the same as what happens when we go to File, Save. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go File, Save, and this will just bring up a dialog and ask us where we wanna save it. So I'll save this uh, on my desktop and I'll call it snow.svg. So now we can see that file. It's saved on my computer, and we can look at it right here, this snow SVG. We could drag and drop that into the web browser if we want and see what it looks like in the web browser. And it can also be displayed by um, different vector graphics software. It's an open format, very easily editable and displayable by many different programs. But you might want to export this as an image instead. So to do that, we have different options. We have a PNG image, a JPEG image, a GIF image, and a WebP image. And we'll go through each of these and look at the different options. Some of these options change depending on what uh, we have selected different options that we have. So with a PNG image, we can change the viewable area. So we can do just the entire view or we can do a certain selection. If we have selection selected here and we click on a certain thing, we can click preview to see what that'll look like. And we see it. this has a transparent background and it just gets these this part of the image, not the whole image. Whereas if we click on view and generate a preview, we see what that entire view will look like. So it still has a transparent background, but it doesn't get, uh, but it gets everything in the entire image and not just the selected area. So the area we can do view or selection. We can also choose the width and height. Since this vector source art can be scaled to any size, we could do this 500 by 500, which is what it's at now. Those units would be pixels, or we could do it 5,000 by 5,000 if we want this to be a higher quality. We could also adjust the DPI. But this DPI is dots per inch, and it's only going to be metadata, so it can be overwritten um, by the printing software or the software that's displaying it. We can also choose the colors, so if we go to into palette, we can choose to have fewer colors displayed if we want to use 16 colors only. This would be useful if we're printing and we only have so many colors available or maybe doing embroidery or creating something like that where you need to have a, only a specific amount of colors. That's also going to lower the quality and the file size. And with PNG images, the compression only affects the file size. It never affects the quality of the image. PNG does support a transparent background, but if we wanted to, we could change this color as well to be a specific color, and then everything that would have been transparent will now be that color. PNG is a very common and widely used image format. The next one we'll look at is this JPEG. This is an image format that does not support a transparent background, so if you need transparency, uh, it's not going to be supported in JPEG. We still have the area selection and the width and height, but we have this new one called compression. So the compression at one, it's going to be the highest quality, and the lower we go, the lower quality and the smaller file size we're going to have. If I set this down to 0.06, and I'll export this, I'll call this snow006, and we'll save this, and then we'll export another version, and we'll just call this snow1. Now we can look at these files and I can open each of these and we'll compare the differences. So we see on the left hand side here we have the .006 and on the right hand side the 1. There's an obvious difference in image quality and file size as well. This file size is 4.2 kilobytes whereas this one over here is 83.6 kilobytes. So JPEG is a good image format to use if you're wanting to lower your file size and you don't really care about the image quality. So for certain situations that can be useful, but you also sacrifice not being able to use transparency in your image as well. Another format you can use for exporting is GIF. This format is commonly used for animated images. It's very easily uh, read by web browsers, uh, but it doesn't support, it supports a limited transparent background. It's a legacy format and it only supports up to 256 colors. So unless you have a specific use case, uh, you may want to choose a different method for exporting your artwork. This next one we'll look at is WebP, and this is a relatively new format. It was introduced by Google in 2010. It's a bitmap format. It does support transparent background. 
You can also choose the quality like we did with the JPEG. This format is not as widely supported as the others. For example, Chrome and Firefox do a good job of rendering this in their browsers, but Safari does not have support for it at this point in time. These next two options are SVG and SVGZ. These are going to be the same, except that the SVGZ will be a smaller file size because it's compressed. We also can't edit it uh, as easily, and I'll show you what I mean. We already have the SVG exported, but if we do an SVGZ, we can click export, and we'll save that alongside. So we'll just call this, again, snow.svgz. And now we have both these files here. They're going to look the same, but if we examine the code, we'll see the difference. A lot of modern text editors can uh, extract this on the fly and edit this, so you can convert an SVGZ into an SVG. It just makes the file larger. But to show you an example of what the raw data looks like, we can just run the cat command on the snow.svg, and we'll see that it's human-readable data that we can get in and edit. Well, if we do the same thing, but with the Z at the end, we see that it's all just computer data, it's binary. So this is just compressed, meaning we can't edit it until we convert it back to an SVG. But like I said, a lot of modern text editors will let you edit the SVGZ just by converting it into an SVG while you're editing, and then when you save it, it converts it back to an SVGZ. Other important options that we have while exporting the SVG is that we can convert the text to a path. We can also remove non-standard namespaces and we can adjust the way the viewport is displayed. We can have it be set to responsive, which means the browser or the viewer displaying it is going to set these units what it, what it wants them to be. They can resize and scale them automatically. If we set fixed, these attributes are going to be predefined according to our document setup. We can export as an HTML document. This is going to be very similar to the SVG, but not as verbose, and it's very easily inserted into another HTML5 document. The final option that we have is PDF format, which is very widely, very common format. We can set the page size, width, and height. We can adjust the background, and this just will be a single page. We can also convert the text to paths, just like we could with the SVG. I hope this video has helped you better understand the export options available in Boxy SVG.